Imagine a sunny spring day. It is market time. People are gathering on a central square, women with kids, elderly. They're running errands, meeting with friends, enjoying life. When suddenly, a chain of bombs is being dropped on the central square. Dozens of citizens are killed. Half of the city is destroyed. Innocent civilians have been deprived of their lives because of the will of a dictator who preferred tyranny over democracy. On the next day, a painter reads about this atrocity in a newspaper, and he is so shocked by this terror that he creates a huge painting. Later in the years, this painting has become an anti-war symbol and was used in a number of anti-military protests and demonstrations. It was shown in the best museums all over the world and now is hanging in the UN headquarters in New York. Picasso painted his Guernica to commemorate this brutal massacre. Of course, many who survived the attack are no longer alive today, but people all around the globe are familiar with the Guernica story, though primarily through art, not history. Why has this painting left such an imprint on our collective memory of the event. Many factors have contributed to its significance, such as Picasso's brand, his sharp perception of the reality, applicability of the story to so many universal contexts other than Spanish, and without a doubt, the symbolism of the canvas. The simultaneous simplicity of the color palette and the complexity of the composition creates a narrative and a feeling of frenzy that stays with viewers long after seeing this painting. Art may have the ability to entertain us, provoke thoughts, but it also has the power to affect real change in the communities. Nowadays, the true smart power is not anymore strength and violence, but culture that in a subtle and delightful way educates and catalyzes mindset shifts. Such countries as the US or France are considered to be very influential states, not only because of their armies or nuclear weapons, but also cinema, architecture, paintings have served to establish their domination. Yuval Harari says that human is a dominant creature in this world because on top of the objective reality, we have been able to construct a second layer of make-believe reality, comprising such fictional entities as the European Union, dollar, God, or human rights. Such abstract concepts are the new currency and very powerful forces in the world. That's why the impact of culture cannot be underestimated. Using such a weapon of influence comes with obligations, of course. And I believe that one of the major responsibilities of artists, and the idea that artists have responsibilities may come as a surprise to some, is to help people not only get to know something and understand with their brains, but also feel it emotionally and physically. That's how art can mitigate the numbing effect created by the glut of information we are facing today and motivate us to turn thinking into doing. Ukrainian film festival that I organized in Winduk is another example of what I believe art can do. Waking up every day that's far away from home where missiles explode every day is an emotional roller coaster that eventually flows into a feeling of guilt for the safety you have under the peaceful Namibian sky. So I was asking myself every day, how can I help? How can I make a difference? And how can I evoke authentic compassion of local people and thus their support? That's when an answer came with a bright example from my own experience. After I watched a movie, Small Country, about the genocide in Rwanda, these tragic events hit me differently. I started doing my own research, investigating the cause of the conflict, 
and numbers in the statistics were replaced with real human lives whose stories you begin to sympathize with. It became obvious to me that showing our prominent Ukrainian movies is the way to arouse genuine empathy and reignite the interest. Through visual storytelling, humans deep dive into the culture in a short span of a time and learn more about historical events, landmarks, language or habits. And that's how it stops to matter that Ukraine is located 10,000 kilometers away from Namibia. But what starts to matter is that we're all humans who deserve to live, love, love. And that's the way from indifference to support, from making war to making love. And by spreading this love, we have been able to collect donations for the cultural restoration of Ukraine, have the Minister of Culture making a speech for Namibians, make people eagerly come to our events to learn more about the most talked about country in 2022 and be highlighted on all important national media channels. I felt that the road to people's hearts and minds lies through the art, not through protests or petitions. And I was right. It was the highest reward and ultimate victory to hear the feedback from Namibians whose country did not condemn the war officially. But now they learned a couple of words in Ukrainian. They will plant a sunflower in their garden to show solidarity. They will monitor the news more profoundly and even come to help rebuild the country. I guess you have started questioning yourselves, but how did it happen? In fact, the mechanism is uh, very simple. When people read the information, it solely creates an awareness. They read facts, see numbers, and all this data is going straight to their brain. It results in knowledge, but then we easily flip past to other headlines with the sense of disconnectedness. On the other hand, when using art as a medium to get to know something, it is accompanied by a different chain reaction. By watching a movie, contemplating a painting, listening to a song, or experiencing any other form of art, our serotonin level getting raised and blood flow getting increased in a certain part of the brain by as much as 10%, which is the equivalent to gazing at a loved one. By the way, it's very exciting to finally see some scientific proof that life is enhanced by the contact with works of art. So, as soon as this happens, all the perceived information is going straight to the heart of the viewer, which results in compassion. This in turn helps us move beyond ourselves, finding a bigger connection to the world community and to the world circle, and transcend all the barriers and limitations. I'm convinced that by bringing us together to share and discuss, a work of art can make us more tolerant towards differences and towards one another. The encounter with art, when, with others over art, can help us move beyond ourselves, expand our notion of we, and show that individual engagement in this world has actual consequences. I foresee that in the future, art will be invited to take place and discuss the social, political, or economical issues even more than it is now, and that artists will be invited when leaders at all levels, from local to global, consider solutions to challenges that we are facing today. Cultural development should be a priority for any country in this world. And creative industry should get funding not on a residual basis, but on an equal footing with law enforcement, medical or educational sectors. Because let's not underestimate the power of the Guernica. Thank you.